What's going on, y'all? Jem Mint here with the weekly comic book day reviews. It's Wednesday, October 19th, and as always, gonna go through this week's comics as spoiler free as possible. We are celebrating our 9,000 follower milestone over on Whatnot today, and we're giving away some dope books, man. We got the Batman Spawn, the first one, and the War Devil follow up. We're also giving away the first appearance of Cletus Cassidy, the first appearance of Carnage and Carnage Mind Bomb. So make sure to come through and swing on over to Whatnot. I kick things off for Whatnot Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. Got $1 start auctions on exclusive variants, ratios, and those giveaways. So make sure to swing on by. We're gonna start this week off with Marvel Comics, and this is Crypt of Shadows. It's a one-shot, oversized issue with multiple creators and telling multiple stories with the macabre, with the supernatural. Of course, you have this epic battle between Man-Thing and X-23 that lasts literally hundreds of thousands of years because they both keep regenerating. you got a Morbius story in here. You've got a Moon Knight, Werewolf by Night story. Not really into these kind of long one-shots that don't seem to matter or lead into other things, but um, I read the whole thing. I kind of did enjoy it looking back at it. Speaking of Moon Knight, Moon Knight is here with issue 16. Jed McKay has been a really strong series so far. I feel like this was one of the weaker issues. A lot of exposition. Moon Knight basically meeting with the vampires of Chinatown and um, I guess trying to form some type of an alliance. I don't know. It was a lot of talking. I was kind of bored, but some interesting stuff with Hunter's Moon that happened in this issue. Great artwork too, man. It's Like I said, a strong run, just not really the strongest issue. Moving on over to Thor, we have issue 28 by Donny Cates, Al Ewing, and Salvador La Roca. This is the second part of this whole Thor Venom issue, tying into what's going on in the pages of Venom with the whole Eddie Brock is all of these kings in black in that futuristic garden. We kind of see that take place and transpire in this issue, and we get something that we've seen in What Ifs, dealing with Thor and the symbiote. I don't know, I kind of feel like this run has passed its peak and it's just kind of doing fun whatever stuff, making Thor turn into Hulk, making Thor turn into Venom, whatever, whatever. But what was really dope about this issue is the Donald Blake stuff. If you guys recall, Loki's got him underground in Asgard just being tortured. Now that's going to tie in with a very Venom type of origin, but for Donald Blake. So I'm interested to see where that goes and sticking with symbiotes, going <laughs> from outer space to Asgard to hell, we have Carnage with issue 7 by Rom V, and he's joined by Rogue Antonio. This one was okay. Uh, like we left off with the last issue, Carnage is with his crony, the wannabe host. He's in hell. He's looking for Malachi or Malekith. They do find him, and they uh, meet Malekith with the other crony who's got the essence of Cletus Cassidy inside of him. I don't know. It's getting a little bit confusing, but it does come to a head here. Kind of like a, a nice climatic uh, ending here. Leading into the next issue of Carnage, will the symbiote escape from hell? Does he take the powers of Malekith? You got to read to find out. I thought it was okay. Moving on over to the mutant stuff. We have X-Force issue 33 by Benjamin Percy, Robert Gill, Guru EFX. So... I liked where they were going with the Craven infiltrating Krakoa thing, but they kind of went off the rails here. Just played it off as some Danger Room, Savage Land type of issue. Tying it in with Omega Red and Deadpool, ha who have been doing like their own thing during this arc. I don't know. I was kind of a little bit let down with this issue. It was fun. I mean, I got through it. Uh, and then we have the main X-Men title. This is the Forge-led story with the children of the Cradle. And uh, they have been... I guess it, it's not really a spoiler at this point, but they sectioned off this cradle so that they think they took over the earth and the universe but they're really in some type of simulation well one of them finds their way out of this simulation and that's what we're dealing with in here uh, another okay issue um scott summers havoc going at it like i said forge uh, he's inside of the cradle with caliban the ending the surprise i didn't really get i was like okay am i supposed to care about this so i guess it was just okay Moving on to Alien by Philip Kennedy Johnson. This is issue number two. So in issue one, they recruited this team of synths, the androids from the Alien universe, to go on a mission to, I guess, check everything out on this planet that we nuked the hell out of. We're ready for terraforming. And of course, they find themselves in a, a pack of xenomorphs. But they're like super-powered synths. So, you know, they do their thing. You know, I don't really understand what the point of this run is so far, but I guess, I guess it was an action pack. Uh, way of, I guess, not having the aliens, the xenomorphs, be the predator and actually 
take a licking instead of killing all of, all of the humans. Speaking of Predator, issue three is here. This one's by Ed Breeson and Kev Walker. So this follows this character on the cover that you see here. A predator killed her family when she was a kid. So she's been hunting this predator down ever since. She's got like 23 kills under her belt. Hasn't found this exact predator yet. Until now, she's tracked him down. But it looks like the predator is tracking her down as well. So kind of an interesting dynamic going on here. Um, it was a pretty good issue. I enjoyed the alien and the predator stuff. The last one we have is Midnight Suns. This is issue number two by Ethan Sachs, Luigi Zagari, and Antonio Fabuela. So didn't really like this issue. Uh, this is a battle between the Midnight Suns, Blade, Wolverine, Magic, versus Doctor Doom and the Doom Bots. Doesn't feel serious. Doesn't feel like it had stakes. They kind of played Doom as a punk in this issue. And the whole Agatha Harkness being introduced here trying to save the strange academy character who's supposed to bring on the apocalypse or what have you and, and making it all about like women and covens and witches and stuff like that i don't know i wasn't into it and i picked up the deadly neighborhood spider-man one i can't find where the hell i put it i didn't get to read it uh and that's everything for marvel moving on over to dc we have the finale of the rogues this is issue four by williamson leo max and wordy love this series love how real and how dark they make captain cold he doesn't seem like a goofy batman rogues villain like they really made like oceans 12 but all villains uh trying to escape gorilla city and fighting gorilla grod it was a dope little mini series i like the oversized format with the adult themed i don't know why they don't uh, do more of these i guess they don't sell too well from what i hear which is probably why they didn't do this in that same vein so this is Batman One Bad Day, but Penguin, issue number one by John Ridley, Giuseppe Camincoli, Cam Smith, and Arf Prianto. I like this issue. I feel like the first one, the Riddler one, was the strongest. Then they had the Two-Face one, which was okay. And then this one was just kind of okay. I mean, I did like it. It's a little bit in the future, or I don't know if it's exactly present time, but Penguin is no longer uh, the ruler of his crime empire. He's been kicked out by the umbrella man he's been played for a fool he has nothing so this is like watching the penguin come up once again going from nothing to one gun with one bullet to one gun with three bullets to having one henchman to two and then building a squad up and taking back his rightful crime empire so i did like it it wasn't pick of the week contender or anything but it was okay uh, then we got World's Finest. This is issue eight by Mark Wade, Mora, and Bond Villain. So this is the new dynamic duo, this whole Kid Thunder, no, Boy Thunder instead of Boy Wonder. So this character right here crash landed on Earth, similar to how Cal L did, but from a different dimension rather than a different planet, learning his powers, learning how to use them in situations to help save people. It was all right. Moving on to Nightwing 97, Tom Taylor joined by Rendondo, Borges, Felipe, and Lucas. Amazing issue following the aftermath of the blockbuster event. Uh, tying it in, again, to the Heartless Man, but we still don't know who the hell that is or what the deal is with him. This is more of Mayor Maroney, well, not Mayor Maroney, Mr. Maroney, uh, crime boss who thought he had it made in the shade under blockbuster. Now he doesn't have it made anymore. Uh, and, and gets himself into all kinds of trouble with not only the law, but other mob families, and Nightwing and Batgirl are trying to protect him. thought it was a great issue. Uh, we have another finale, Batman the Night, issue 10, Chip Zdarsky with D. Giaminencio and Placencia. Great series, great finale, great final issue. It kind of ends how you would expect it. This was all about Bruce Wayne training to become Batman and the final confrontation with Ra's al Ghul. Of course, Ra's al Ghul wants to you know save the world but in his way it's basically destroying all the major cities and starting over so bruce wayne is not going to be for that i thought it was a great series gcpd the blue wall issue number one by john ridley brad anderson and rico murakami i didn't know what to expect with this i kind of dug it it was definitely a gotham city pd type of issue uh with montoya trying to inspire new recruits rookies this one rookie which, which Ridley does this a lot. He likes to play with like modern events. He plays with the race stuff a lot. And the whole rookie had to uh, respond to an APB on a young black teenager with a red hoodie. And it's like, dude, how many of those are out here in Gotham City? That's like not narrowing it down. And her pulling the gun on uh, a perp and 
uh, doing the right thing, but not really meaning to do the right thing and having to live with those consequences. I thought he handled it pretty tactfully for John Ridley because I'm not really a fan of a lot of his stuff, but I did enjoy this issue. Which brings us to Flashpoint Beyond. Another finale here, issue six, Jeff Johns, Sheridan, Adams, Armancio, Johnin, Ferrado Jr., and Belair. I almost gave this the gem of the week just because it touched me. <laughs> it was touching. I like the stuff with Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne. They kind of figure out in order to save Bruce, they have to allow the Bruce Wayne from their universe to have died. They can't go back like Barry Allen to save him because that's what caused this whole Flashpoint mess to begin with. And then Bruce Wayne realizing the same thing about his father, tying it into the letter that he sent him, the Doomsday Clock stuff before the button. So it was dope. Moving on over to Image, we have Gunslinger Spawn, issue number 13. Amazing issue. I had heavy 90s vibes going throughout this uh, of Javi wearing like the Image hat and just like the detailed uh, pencils and inks that they put in on this. It's my favorite Spawn ongoing. We see flashbacks of what happened to Javier how he was killed, what happened to his family, and how he seeks out his revenge in a similar manner in this issue. Thought it was dope. Nita Hall's Nightmare blog is here with issue number nine. I thought it was a very strong issue. We find out that it's not just kind of uh, ghosts and demons that she has to worry about. There's a bigger, darker, larger demon at play here, uh, and, and Nita Hall has to be very careful investigating these homicides. So this was a good issue. I... <laughs> I'm digging this stuff. I tend to like the horror comics, even though I'm not really like a horror movie fan. Issue five of Public Domain is here by Chip Zdarsky. So like I said uh, in the poll list video, this is all about this guy who created comic book characters that the company owned the rights to and made billions off of movies. He didn't really get anything out of it. He's got the rights back. Now, what's funny is he's going to be publishing domain comic books under his imprint, but they're still going to also publish domain comic books under that big corporation imprint and his ex-partner is kind of getting that bug like he wants to outdo him in writing the comic book so i don't know are we going to have a war of who's going to create the best public domain comic book you got to read to find out and before we get into the gem of the week my favorite comic book of the week open enrollment is active for the november 2022 mystery mail call Make sure to hit ComicTom101.com for your chance to reserve a box where you're going to get this exclusive variant for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue 101. Plus, there is a trade dress version of the Batman Beyond reprint that we saw debuted at New York Comic Con 2022, which was just the Virgin. So you get those two exclusives, you get comics at random, and one children's comic published by Scoot Comics with an homage cover by Nate Made It. Make sure to check out Comic Tom 101 and reserve that box today. Which brings us to the gem of the week, and I kind of foreshadowed this. It's a horror comic. The Silver Coin, issue 15, is called The Spore, and it's by Michael Walsh. I think Michael Walsh did the best job yet in this series of showing how the coin affects a person, how it makes that person do evil deeds to other people, and how it drains them of their life essence in the process, and how the coin doesn't really give a shit about the person. It just takes what it needs and then moves on to the next host. Dark, disturbing disgusting horror inspired anthology series so every issue is different there is some type of lingering uh themes kind of similar to ice ice cream man but not even as much i think it's even more subtle in the silver coin i guess except for the fact that the silver coin is in each issue but i digress gem of the week i love this series you guys should definitely check it out you could even just pick up issue 15 and jump on right there those are the new comics for today. I know I missed a couple of them. I, I missed Lady Hell from Dynamite, and I missed that Deadly Neighborhood Spider-Man. I'm going to have to get caught up on those. Let me know what your favorite comics were in the comments down below. Appreciate you watching. Stay minty fresh. Peace.